Begin by safely raising and supporting your vehicle, as well as removing the front wheels. For additional assistance with those tasks, please follow the link provided at the end of this video. Next, remove the brake pad wear sensor from the connector on the top of the wheel carrier. Follow the wire towards the caliper, removing it from the bleeder nipple. Next, you're going to remove the retaining pin, green arrow, using a small set of pliers. Use a punch and a small hammer and tap out the retaining pin towards the inside of the caliper, red arrow. Use care as the retaining clip can be under pressure, green arrow. Pull the retaining clip out. Use your hands or pliers and remove the old wear sensors. If your wear sensors have activated, you cannot reuse them. There is a sensor on the inboard and outer pad on the front, red arrows. Use a brake pad spreader and compress the pads outward, pushing the pistons back into the caliper. You are going to be pushing the pistons back into the caliper and this will cause brake fluid in the system to move back up into the reservoir. Open the front trunk and remove the access panel for the brake fluid reservoir red arrow. Make sure there is room for the fluid to enter the reservoir. If the pads are really worn and the fluid level is between max, red arrow, and minimum, blue arrow, you may need to suction a little out. Constantly check as you are compressing the pads back. Use a brake pad spreader and compress the pads outwards, pushing the pistons back into the caliper, blue arrow. If you don't have a spreader, you can use a screwdriver. Just make sure not to get it on the rotor or damage the boots around the pistons. You want to get a thin trim removal tool between the pads retaining plates, green arrow if equipped, and the caliper to separate them. Again, use care around the dust boots on the pistons, blue arrows. Once free of the retaining plate, if equipped, pull the pads out. Here you can see one of the shims retaining clips stayed in the piston, blue arrow. If any of the shims or dampening plates stay in the caliper, use your trim removal tool or pliers and retrieve it using care around the pistons and the dust boots, green arrow. Here is an ATE backing plate removed from the caliper after the pad. Note the two plugs, green arrows, that sit in the pistons, yellow arrows. Here at Pelican, we use Hawk brake pads. They come in a multitude of compounds, and besides being the best pads we have ever used, they do not have these plates. A little anti-squeal and the pads drop straight in. The problem with the backing plates with the pots is they tend to rust together. They get frozen into the piston, blue arrow. Ours were so bad, we sent our calipers out to PMB Performance. They fixed them up beautifully, and it is much cheaper than buying new calipers. When we got the calipers back from PMB, they looked like new factory calipers. Installation is the reverse of removal. Make sure to remove the cover on the sticky side of the shims or dampeners if installing. Remember to top up the brake fluid as needed and pump the brake pedal a few times before driving to set the new pads. Brake pads need to be properly bedded or broken in. Brake in your pads according to the manufacturer of the type of pads you purchased. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out another video in this series.